Hi, everyone. My name is Kirk Bachman, and welcome back to The Ultimate Dish. In today's episode, I'm speaking with Tim Condon, executive chef, owner of Angry Cactus Bar and Grill in San Angelo, Texas. By age 14, Tim was already engaged in his first job as a restaurant cook, and by 22, he became executive chef of Paradise Cove, an oceanfront estate in Hawaii. Since then, he has gone on to launch several successful restaurants, including Lone Star Cheeseburger, which was voted the number one food truck burger in Texas, in Texas, by Mobile Cuisine. Tim is currently a partner with Escoffier's Work and Learn program, which gives new and existing restaurant employees the chance to complete an online culinary degree while working in the kitchen. Join me today as I chat with Chef Tim about his development journey as a young chef, multicultural cuisine, and the ways restaurants can improve employee retention. And there he is. Good morning, chef. How are you? Doing well. How are you? You know, I, I couldn't be better. Could not be better. Love, love the background. Well, um, it looks the like angry cactus, so. you're at the, <laughs> you're at the angry cactus. We need to change the format of this. If, if, if you can reach in there and holler and have somebody bring us a couple of cocktails, that would be a good start, right? I've got my green tea to get me going. You've got but, your green well. tea. Oh, I love that. I love that. I've got a little latte over here. So we're, we're off and running. It's really, really good to chat with you. You're, you're sitting there in, in the, the booming metropolis of San Angelo, Texas, West Texas, right? Yeah. I'm here in downtown San Angelo, Texas. It's a nice day, not too hot. And I'm here on this uh, amazing patio that we have here at the angry cactus. And it's a great day to be in West Texas. That's for sure. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And we may hear some traffic going by, but that's okay. That's okay. I like it. It just yep. adds to the ambiance. Busy street. <laughs> it is the busy street. I love it. We've got so much to talk about today. First first and foremost, uh, really appreciate the time. Um, I'm a big hat guy, so you got you to gotta film. I'll tell you a funny story of my hat when you tell me the story of your hat. All right. Yeah, this is a Bogle hat. Uh, we've got a great relationship with Bogle Vineyards and Jade. D. John. And uh, so we, they come out every year and I always like to kind of support and uh, show our favorite brands and our favorite vineyard, one of our favorite vineyards that we have here in uh, wine selection here at the Angry Cactus. Oh, that's cool. Are they, are they out of California or? They are. That's yeah. great. And, and you do some wine dinners with them? Yeah, we, we do that and we do a variety of different things, but uh, that one's coming up uh, here in the next month or so. So Figured I'd give them some love. <laughs> that, there you go. Right. Absolutely. No charge whatsoever. Lots of love for the vineyard. I, lo I love it. So so I've got the KB, which many people, I believe, just assume is Kirk Bachman. You know, my my little my little outfit, as my wife calls it for for the for the podcast. But ironically enough, it's uh, it's uh, Kane Brown. It's a it's a Kane Brown. Ad. I'm a big, big country fan, as I think you are. Nice. And uh, I probably have 300 hats at home. I got to protect the cone. Absolutely, <laughs> got a story about every one of them too. But there you uh, go. But today's about you. Let's talk about you. You you have not always been in West Texas. You grew up in uh, in Nebraska, right? Yeah, my uh, my hometown is Omaha, Nebraska, and uh, you know I started cooking at a very early age. Uh, actually, um, you know my home was kind of filled with uh, not so many TV dinners and things of that nature. So when I had to jump in the cupboard and get something to make it would be maybe a can of clams and some linguine or something of that nature so oh, wow. uh, I kind of okay. started something um you know in the back of my mind and going through high school we I was blessed to uh have a really good culinary program at my high school part of the pro start program oh wow uh, okay. and it really kind of developed my passion for really wanting to do this for a living and and really the art form that it truly is 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 cooking and sharing um, your passion literally on a plate. And so um, I just kind of figured really early on that that's what I wanted to do. And I really knew that it was going to take a very long period of time to, very, you know, get good at it. And I, I really was focused on really, you know, trying to stay ahead of the curve and really focusing on what I wanted to do. So I was very lucky and blessed to have had those mentors and have the Pro Start program there to kind of guide me along this path at the very early beginning stages of my career. And that's great. Let's, let's back up a little bit too. What, what was there some cooking in the home as well? Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa. Yeah, we, we, uh, you know, my, my mom cooked often. Um, and really what I, what I was 
uh, interested in doing is, is quite frankly, I, my first job was at Burger King. So I didn't necessarily know exactly where I was going to fit in the field, uh, really fit in the industry. I was just fully aware that I love to cook. And so, uh, you know, I worked at Burger King very early on for a few years and it really provided a good business structure, um, you know, and at that age, I was probably 15 or 16 at the time. And I was really trying to figure out, you know, is this what I wanna do the rest of my life? Because I've always believed that if you can find something you really wanna do and that's a passion of yours, you don't really work a day in your life. And I think throughout my career, I've really truly been a testament to that because I wake up every single day wanting to go to work and excited what the day entails. And so, um, you know, I, I spent the early part of my career really trying to understand, kind of get the nuance, get the business platform, get the business structure put together and kind of understand, okay, if I'm gonna make money selling food for a living, I really need to know the nuts and bolts and, and all of the different mechanisms in the industry and the, and the different checks and balances that are needed to really make it profitable. And that's really what my focus was early on. And I'm very grateful to have had mentors along the way to kind of be able to bring me along that path. And now you're mentors to other. Let's stay on that topic just for a second, because it's so important. And, um, you know, a lot of students will, uh, um, uh, watch watch our podcast this this whole idea of being profitable or having a successful restaurant and a lot of that you know happens going in and out of the back door right could you speak a little bit a, a, about the importance of understanding food cost and and how yeah. that translates into the price that your customers pay exactly so i was just really blessed to have uh, kind of had a mathematical brain uh, as kind of a default and so um, I remember getting an early job in my, my first executive chef's position was in Hawaii at Paradise Cove. And, you know, I was 21 at the time, I believe. And the, the whole thing is, you know, I asked him, I said, you know, why me? I was shocked to actually have gotten that job, you know. And they were explaining that, you know, the product cost formula, was, I was the only one that they interviewed that understood what the product cost formula is. Opening inventory plus purchases minus closing inventory divided by sales. You know, it's a very simple <laughs> formula, but really understanding what that means from looking on a shelf to understanding what that metric means to uh, teaching every single one of my sous chefs and my chef de parties in my restaurant what that means. Uh, that gets me going. And, and so being able to understand the metric side of the business, not just being able to cook. I tell my guys all the time that, um, you know, everybody that trains under me, they're going to know the business side just as much as the creative side, because you're not a chef until you are able to monetize, uh, you know, your field. And so in the restaurant industry, you have to be profitable. And it's a very small, small margin. Uh, the smallest margin of it, most industries. And so being sure. able to train people under me how to actually make the nuts and bolts work from a mathematical perspective, that's really where uh, where I shine. And I, that's really where I try to uh, show, uh, you know, the junior chefs, the sous chefs under me, kind of where all of that works. And that's kind of truly one of my most proud um, teachable things that I could really kind of point to and say, that's when you're going to work for me, that's really where you're going to get and what you're going to learn. Well, I love that chef. That's so poignant. And, and I appreciate the transparency. I, I can remember the days and I'm, and I'm sure you enjoy it too. You, you know, the formula that you just recited off the top of your head, right. Um, you know, it, it's just like clockwork. And I, and I miss those days when you're in the, in the back, right. And you're just working and the fishmonger comes in or, or some purveyor and they're just chatting with you and you don't even have to look up. And you're just asking, you know, price per pound, price per pound. You know exactly what you can charge in the front of the house, right? And if he's coming in with, you know, fifteen dollar a pound, whatever it is, you know, that's that's going to be a challenge, or or it's not. And yeah, exactly. And I think um, really what we try to do here at the Angry Cactus and the model we really try to follow here is that we have a core product base. We are focused on providing the best steaks in West Texas, mm -hmm. some of the most classic dishes that we're known for, like our meatloaf and our chicken fried steak, our chicken fried chicken, things of that nature. But we also have these really amazing five course meals that we do or paella on the patio dinners that we do, oh, very interactive that. in nature. And so 
um, being able to be um, the culinary hotspot of West Texas. That's really what we're after. And so we get the best products. We get the best steaks money can buy. We get the highest quality beef, right? You know, if we're doing a local game or something like that, we really truly know where our animals come from, you know, and what they're fed and what region of Texas they're coming from. And so being able to um, have people that want that product on a plate uh, provided by our staff and our chefs, um, it's a really humbling feeling because you know, that, that's what we wake up for every single day. Myself started from the top all the way down to our dishwashers. They're here to provide a great experience for every single person that walks through our front door. And it costs a lot of money to do that. A lot of time, a lot of staff effort, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears by myself and everyone below me to execute that vision. And, and, and we live for it here. And that's kind of the, what we call the culinary culture around here you know every single person that walks into my kitchen they must have their own knives they must be dressed the way that we're uh you know expecting and must wear that uniform with pride and so that's really kind of the old school culinary culture that i was taught but more importantly it's what i want to pass along because it's the reason i sit here with you today is i was able to go through 25 years of doing that over a period of time and, and it's my obligation to pass that forward to the next generation or the next class of people that are coming below me. So well said, Chef. So well said. Augusta Scafi would be proud. Absolutely proud. You know, I, I'm curious, again, lots of students will listen and, and other, other listeners will be intrigued by. So, so, you, so you had a very formalized um, exposure to the culinary arts through the post, ProStar program in high school, which is, which is phenomenal. Um, do you believe that, you know, the, the idea that you understood math and that you understood business and appreciated it, right? And it sounds like you like your customers. That's, that's also part of the formula, right? You have to lo love your guests. Um, to go right from high school um, or thereabouts, to, you know, to an executive chef job in Hawaii, was that serendipitous or was, you said you were shocked by it, but was that the original plan or did it just kind of fall into your lap? And I'm like, wow, this is an opportunity that might not come along again. I'm going to jump on it. Well, I think one of my most, my, my favorite sayings of all time is what is the definition of success, right? And what I tell all my cooks, it's the intersection between getting an opportunity and being prepared. And so, you know, there's so many people that get opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. You know, if you come from a wealthy family, you probably get a lot more opportunities than if you come from a poor family, right? That's true. But also the other, the intersection is being prepared, right? You know, when opportunity hits being prepared and there's so many people that get all these opportunities, they're never prepared, they fail, right? Mm -hmm. Or there's the other version where there's so many people who get, uh, that are always prepared and never get an opportunity. And so really what it takes is that intersection of being prepared and getting an opportunity. And I've always um, really felt it's extremely important to really be prepared. Do your homework, understand how things work, you know, in a culinary setting, understand what the five mother sauces are, how to make them, you know, what different stocks would be, right? The different, the different um, techniques in the, in the kitchen and understanding what collagen is and why it breaks down at certain temperatures versus what a very lean meat would be with no collagen, right? Or, and things of that nature. And so understanding all of that, we're scientists, but we're also mathematicians at the same time. And so if you can understand and be prepared, all you need is one opportunity because that's all I got. I'm a very um, self-made person. I started my first food truck uh, you know, I built it in my garage here in San Angelo over 12 years ago, and uh, and it made me who I am today, uh, being able to, uh, you know, we're working on our third and fourth restaurant as we speak. And so uh, it's really cool to um, be prepared, but also get just your first opportunity. And I, I tell my guys in the kitchen, you know, you know, we're in an industry that's maybe not the most highest paying at the very beginning of your career. But if you prepare and if you understand what things are, you're going to get your opportunity and you can run with it and you can do your own thing and be a success story as well. And so I think what we're our focus on here with the people below me and my my sous chefs and my chef de parties is 
giving them every opportunity to be prepared in our industry, to understand what goes on, to understand what you need, the, the type of culture that you need, uh, the type of mentality you need, because we all know not everyone can handle the restaurant industry, right? Yeah, um, and yeah. understanding all of that and putting it all together. And this is like the culinary university. This is what I, I call it all the time. This is my culinary university, my culinary complex here at the Angry <laughs> Cactus. We have 12,000 square feet of awesomeness and it's only getting larger <laughs> as we speak. So so much great TikTok material already this morning. I'm totally well, stealing you. all of it. I By love the way, it. I have a new TikTok. So Chef Tim okay. Condon, follow I me saw on TikTok. That. I saw it. I saw it. Um, no, I appreciate the great advice. Um, a, a, a lot of the, the chat around mise en place is so important. Just everything in its place, being ready, a goose would be proud. Um, let, let, let me let me ask real quickly, you, you, you mentioned when you were talking passionately about the angry cactus and being there in San Angelo uh, about local ingredients, sustainability, you know, the, the, the products that you pass along to your customers. How, how much influence did working in Hawaii have on that? Was what was that fun? Was were local ingredients really really kind of cool to work with in, on the island? Yeah, I mean, so Hawaii was uh, so much different from what I truly expected. Being a, a Omaha, born and raised in Omaha, Nebraska, you know, the, the the raised in the suburbs of the Midwest, right? You don't really understand what Hawaii is until you get there, live there for a few years, and so you know, I was always thinking things like. Uh, tropical fruits and uh, different things of that nature. But really what it turns out to be is, uh, you know, you've, it's a hodgepodge of the whole Pacific Rim, basically. And oh, so, okay. you know, you've got a lot of Japanese influence. You've got a lot of local Hawaiian influence, a lot of Polynesian influence, uh, a little bit of Chinese influence, all of these different cultures, um, you know, Filipino and all, you know, it's just, it's amazing. And so it gave me a lot of firsthand education on foods from around the world. And I think it also kind of planted a really amazing foundation for kind of what we do here at the Angry Cactus, was, which is basically a fusion. It's a, you know, Angry Cactus is a West Texas bar and grill, but if you really boil it down, you know, we have a lot of Mexican influence. We have a lot of German influence. A lot of the original settlers here are, are German. So, you know, you've got the traditional German schnitzel. Well, if you really think about it, it's kind of chicken fried steak, right? <laughs> and so, um, you know, there's all these different blendings of, of things. And we try to create this harmony here at the Angry Cactus that showcases what West Texas cuisine is. But really, I want to personally put a stamp on what is West Texas food? What does that fusion look like? And, you know, one of our most popular items is our meatloaf. And it's a perfect example of what West Texas fusion is because, you know, everyone says meatloaf, right? You think of your grandma's meatloaf with the ketchup on top. Well, that's <laughs> not my style. Let me tell you, our meatloaf <laughs> has chorizo in it, corn, cheddar cheese, and it's wrapped in a corn husk and smoked over mesquite for four hours um, to give it that final finish. And the beauty of corn husk is you can let the smoke permeate to that meatloaf, get a nice smoke ring, but none of the moisture escapes, almost like a smoked tamale in a certain way. Wow. Beautiful dish. Wow. Perfect, um, you know, a perfect metaphor, a perfect description for what our restaurant stands for. And that's taking what's around us here in West Texas and creating something that is unique to our part of Texas. And that's what we do, that I'm the most proud of that we do here at Angry Cactus is really showcase what West Texas cuisine is all about, because it doesn't get as much love as say Southeast Texas, Texas or, or North Texas and things of that nature. So we really wanna showcase what we have to offer on a culinary platform. I love it. it, it that reminds me, I was gonna ask you right off the bat, being being where you are kind of, you know, West Texas, uh, if, I don't know if you're a college football fan, but are you guys following UT or are you A&M fans? UT, I'm, I'm, I'm a corn husker. I don't know what UT is. Oh. <laughs> I'm a Nebraska corn husker Ouch. all the way. So Ouch. Oh, we don't know. Okay. But I, I, I'm sure some folks that eat here uh, enjoy UT, but uh, I'm not in that club. Hey, they're on a little bit of a roll, right? They needed a change at, 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 at the leadership there in Nebraska. And I, and I love Scott, right? He was a, yeah. I'm a University of Oregon guy, and he was our uh offensive coordinator for a while but yeah. uh just didn't didn't come together but they look like they're figuring it out they're we'll on see. a little bit of a we'll roll see. we'll see 
<laughs> we'll see. So let me let me let me ask. Um, um, you know, before we got into the angry cactus, Lone Star Cheeseburger, um, you built the the food truck in your garage. Let's talk about that a little bit and where the where the um, motivation for or inspiration for that concept came from. Yeah. So, I mean, being in Honolulu for, uh, you know, quite a few years, I, you know, we had over 800 food trucks on the island of Oahu alone. And wow. so, uh, you know, it was something that was not foreign to me in any way. And anybody that wants to be successful and you're going to move to a new market, open a business, this and that, you really want to look and show and, and, and really scout out that market. And when I came to San Angelo for the first time, I realized that there was no other food trucks here. And this was back in 2010. And so, I figured Lone Star Cheeseburger would be the perfect way. I was 26 years old at the time. And I was saying, all right, if I'm going to open a business, I have not very much money. You know, I had managed to save up like five or $10,000. Uh, you know, I went to the bank and got a loan and, uh, you know, built this food truck right in my driveway. And we opened on May 1st of 2010. Uh, and it's been uh quite a journey we've been open for 12 years now and we're uh opening our second location it's going to be a the world we're taking it out of a food truck and we're going to be opening the world's largest drive through restaurant here in san angelo texas we're going to have seven <laughs> lanes get in this book of world records as you know everything is bigger here in texas yes our yes. fast food restaurant is no different <clears throat> talk talk a little bit about um um, and we'll get to this in a little bit more too. I, I love the way you described the meatloaf. <laughs> like, you know, talk to me about one of the items on the uh, on the menu uh, at the food truck. Yeah, so our food truck is a very unique um, type of burger. We make our own buns from scratch every single morning. Uh, you know, we've got this amazing French fry. We make our own mayonnaise. We make our own mustard. Wow. Uh, you wow. know, so we have <laughs> we have a product that is a, a chef driven fast food product. You know, my, my goal is to get people in and out and really give them a piece of craft experience. <clears throat> and so really what the what the the goal is, is just to be able to compete in the fast food space, but also being able to compete in the fine dining space like you see here okay. at Angry Cactus. And really during 2020, that was the being diversified was an amazing technique and an amazing strategy to help us get through that time. Yeah. Can, can we use you, you touched on it um <clears throat> i'm still thinking about that meatloaf i mean <laughs> what what is the cuisine of west texas or have you redefined it at least in your own mind yeah i mean and that's a really good question because that's truly what the inspiration of this restaurant behind me is is to lay the groundwork lay the foundation and claim what we truly have here, which is beautiful. And that's West Texas cuisine. So things from lamb, you know, San Angelo has more lamb within 120 miles than anywhere else in the world. We've got more sheep than anywhere else in the world. And, you know, here in West Texas, not a lot of the farmers think it's something that you eat, you know, it's a processable animal. Well, I beg to differ. <clears throat> you know, I, I think that goat is an amazing animal. I think that sheep and lamb and things of that nature, they're, 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 they're all amazing animals and they can be cooked in amazing ways. And so that's really kind of what we're after here at the Angry Cactus is to fundamentally kind of box in what West Texas is all about. And so if you look at our chicken fried chicken, for instance, we present it in small, three small little chicken fried chickens on a rectangular plate individually portioned with some uh you know fried onions and a beautiful little uh baby radishes that we usually put over the top and um you know that's just a perfect way to describe something that's from west texas but it's reinvented through my eyes through the chef's eyes and i think that's really where our claim to fame is and and that's really where that culinary culture that i talk about comes from is my whole passion of myself and my team behind me is to really develop that. And that, that really kind of speaks to really the success uh, of what we've done here at Angry Cactus. You know, we've been open here for since 2016 already. And it seems like it was just yesterday, but 
Uh, wow. We've really been able to kind of um, develop that with the leadership inside of my kitchen. And, and we're just hitting on all cylinders. And it's really amazing to have a packed house here and, you know, to see people waiting on the weekends for an hour or so just to get in. And uh, it's a really prideful thing for my team, for myself, to be able to showcase what West Texas cuisine is all about. And we put our heart and soul on every plate here. How how is the community and 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 was it initially a little difficult or was it immediately welcoming? Because you, you know, a community, you mentioned, you know, German roots, uh, there's Mexican roots, there's 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 uh native roots, right? And 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 they're used to their cuisine in a certain way. And you've reinterpreted that, presented it very respectfully. Has has obviously the success is speaks for itself but what was it like initially was it like wow that's not the chicken fried steak that i grew up with yeah you know it, it's funny you say that because <laughs> we did have to kind of uh teach the market a little bit what yeah. our style was you know um one of the big things i talk about when it comes to conversations about being a restaurant tour is you really have to listen to what the people want but in our case we want to be the pulse setter we want to be the pacemaker for what happens and what people eat you know we want to be the trendsetter and so yeah. um in order to do that you have to be able to establish some sort of legitimacy and so mm -hmm. after having lone star cheeseburger open for five or six years here in this market we were able to kind of develop legitimacy and then we got a, a much better shot at kind of taking our game to the next level here at angry cactus and moving it up to a different level of dining and I think that was really, even though it was a struggle, you know, we may had nachos on the menu that were kind of deconstructed at the beginning. And I had all people, farm folks from an hour away coming in here trying to tell me that's not nachos. And they didn't understand <laughs> this is a, this is art on a plate. This is kind of, this is what we're trying to do, right? Um, needless to say, those nachos are not longer, no longer on our menu. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we replaced them with things that are um, a little bit more, um, palatable, but at the same time, going back to the, the pace setting roots, the trend setting roots of we want things that are unique, things that are unique to us, things that are unique to this region of the world, the country, and, and really kind of give a snapshot to folks passing through West Texas. This is what we're all about from a from a culinary perspective. And so uh, it was a challenge at the beginning to kind of teach people that. But once it started rolling, uh, it took a few months and then, you know, people started saying, hey, this was good. And then now, you know, we're one of the busiest restaurants here in San Angelo. Yeah. yeah and people have come to expect a certain a, a certain type of cuisine from you. It reminds me a little bit of the story years ago when my family and I had a restaurant up in the mountains here in Colorado and um, German roots. So, you know, we were really careful. We, you know, we kind of build it as a as a German slash American restaurant. And to your point, we we kept the you know, the local favorites on the menu, but over here in the corner, we had, you know, like you know, eight to 10 items that were very classic from the schnitzel and in a variety of ways. And, and I'll never forget, we started pushing the, uh, you know, this amazing smoked pork loin on the bone, um, which we started serving with, with like a braised cabbage, right? So, so something they were familiar with, they loved the, the, the smoked pork, but we added the cabbage. And then before you know it, they started asking for that. It took a while. It took a while, you know, smoked pork is, is, is a little pink, right? And people are yeah. like, is that cooked? Is that, is that cooked? Well, now, I always, I look can at appreciate things, that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I always look at things in like a three, five, 10 year uh, kind of span and, and sure. really I'm looking at angry cactus and saying, all right, in three, five, 10 years, where are we going to be? What do we want to do? And so I think those, those, um, those objectives that we want in three to five to 10 years are going to be met with a determination with understanding exactly where we go we're going to be remodeling soon right and we're going to be adding on new spaces we're going to be adding a kitchen for the culinary program all of these kind of things and so uh you know we're really looking at the three to five to ten year marks and where can we really maximize the culinary industry here in west texas because we're in a huge vacuum a huge vacuum of folks that want to be in our industry for one, but more importantly, a huge vacuum of passion for our industry, right? Not a yeah. lot of people are raised and grown up in this area and think, oh, I want to be a chef. 
Well, my job is to show them this is an amazing lifestyle. This is an amazing career path. This is an amazing industry. Um, you know, I wake up every single day excited to go to work and, and, and it's my job to show some folks that that's also can be them. It totally shows. I, I love the passion and the commitment. And let, let, let's take that and segue into, yeah, in spite of how busy you are um, with the restaurant and the other concepts, um, you, you engage as, as well as anything, I, anyone I've ever seen in this, in this um, you, you know, this concept. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of put the umbrella of an apprenticeship type program out there, right? So at Escoffier, we call it work and learn this idea of bringing employees in, helping them understand and work their way up in the restaurant industry, in your restaurant, while going to school uh, online, which which affords them the opportunity to work, take care of their personal life, their family. Um, and, and, and then you allow them the time to keep up with their studies. So they're, they're getting that formal education, that degree from Escoffier, while you know, providing value to you and your customers. And, and it's, it, it, it's just absolutely incredible the way that you have adopted uh, this model. Could, could you speak a little bit about how or, or what unique opportunities this type of training model gives to restaurant employees, you know, this idea of formal training with education yeah. with real world experience? So it's, so when I kind of came across the program for the first time, I was it was exactly what I was looking for for my staff and 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 for the people that were under me because, uh, you know, I firmly uh, know from experience that there's really two ways you have to look at the culinary industry. First, you have to understand the technical parts, the ed formal education, understanding the five mother sauces, understanding uh, French cuisine, you know, uh, everything about Escoffier, uh, everything to do with all of those kind of things, right? Um, and understanding how to make hollandaise, all that kind of stuff, the, the structure, all of that. But more importantly, you have to be able to understand how to work the day to day operations of a restaurant or a catering facility or whatever part of the industry you want to be in. And so really what the work and learn program has done for us at the angry cactus is really given that structure, that formal structure that I'm always wanting people to know and understand. And then also I'm able to provide them a real world life working experience. And so. Mm -hmm. Um, my whole goal in this is I want to get people to be able to uh, go to school for free. And so what we do here at the Angry Cactus is we pay for half of your culinary program. Um, and then we also have some scholarships to offer. Uh, we work with the restaurant association here locally to develop scholarships. And my goal is that anyone that comes here does a culinary program with our work and learn program that by the end, when it's all said and done, it'll be 100% paid for. Um, and so we do fundraising events to help that process go. We're building a kitchen that can house up to 12 students here at the Angry Cactus currently um, and uh, additional dining space to be able to do additional fundraisers and things of that nature. And so it's really cool to be able to see people. And I've got my first student graduating um, very soon here. Uh, his name is Terry, and he's been working for me for about two and a half years. He's gone through the culinary program with Escoffier, and he's been with me, and he's worked his way up, and now he's working on being a chef de partie here at the Angry Cactus. But more importantly, what it's done is it's given him the ability to be able to understand when I'm talking about collagen, you know, and breaking down a chicken thigh and braising it a little longer, or short ribs. He understands the science behind that now, thanks to the Escoffier program. And then he also sees the stuff that I pound down his throat, which is opening inventory plus purchases minus closing inventory <laughs> divided by sales, the product cost formula, right? And understanding that. And so what my job is, is to be able to develop these people so that they're the next generation of my business, of, my, of our industry. And, and so I can focus on growing my company and I can let the pieces that I develop uh, play within the business and, and, and we all work and we all gain from that. And so that's really kind of, uh, what we're after, but more importantly, that's what the work and learn program does for us here at the angry cactus is that it gives us a great amount of retention. You know, uh, everybody that's been, uh, in the program, you know, sticks around and they, they, they're bought in, you know, they understand that this is where their career path is and they're, they're just, 
passionate about it, just like mine, just like I am about this career. And it really is contagious, right? And so we've got our next two to three students starting next month. Um, and then we've got a couple following that um, that are going to be part of the program. And so it really creates a great opportunity to come work in my kitchen. They do the work, the, the class work, the labs and everything here in our kitchen. I watch over it. I give them suggestions. They get graded by the Escoffier staff. And it's a, just a really nice marriage of being able to create a formal education, but also getting real work experience. And so that's really what we're after is, you know, I think in the past, a lot of times culinary degrees have been kind of able to been given out, you know, to almost anyone. But when you get into this work and learn situation, you get to work hands on uh, one on one and, and with your hands with these students. And it really I'm able to kind of put my stamp on their career and kind of be able to influence them that way. And they also get this, the great formal education that Escoffier provides. You, you brought up just an incredibly important concept, um, this idea of retention, you know, keep, keep keeping your staff, right? That, that's a, a tremendous, you're a numbers guy, so the ROI is very evident to you. You're yeah. investing in someone who's going to stay with you for a while. A any other advice for entrepreneurs um, to, to allow this model to work for them? Clearly, you have the passion, you're, you're seeing it work in action. Um, how, how does a, uh, if, if I'm opening a restaurant concept, what do I need to understand to make that sort of model work for me? Yeah, well, luckily I've been able to work in some really great kitchens with some really great culinary cultures. And I think that's the big kind of keyword that I like to use is culinary culture, right? Like, and so during the pandemic and during basically everything that's gone over the last couple of years, We've never had a problem really retaining our, our staff. And, and most importantly, the reason for that is, is we create this culinary culture truly, truly kind of um, webbed together by passion, right? Every single person that, that works for me here at the Angry Cactus, you know, they either have to be passionate or they're probably not going to be around very much longer. And because we really, really, really want people that want this industry, love this industry and, and have the same passion that we do. And so it's not a job for us. This is a career path. This is a passion for us. And so we don't look at it as an employment situation. We look at it more as this is a development. This is a culinary education you're going to receive. You know, all of my guys that uh, work for me, they, I have definitions, mise en place is plastered all over my kitchen, a hundred places, right? You know, we talk about having everything in its place and we talk about mise en place is even a metaphor for life, you know, have being prepared and, and um, you know, having everything in a, in a row, you know, getting your credit right first before you open a restaurant, right? That's part of it, having mise en place. Uh, getting the proper education, that's part of having mise en place. So all of these different things and understanding how they affect us in our day-to-day -day lives and our day-to-day -day operations, um, that's really kind of where the rubber meets the road. And so, um, you know, if we can provide that here at the Angry Cactus, then there's nowhere else you want to go. And so no, I, I think that's really the basic of part of it is really creating that culinary culture, you know, making sure, you know, we, we really live this brigade system, right? You know, making sure that everyone understands the chain of command, making sure everyone has a standard. They show up with sharp knives every single day, right? They're in uniform every single day because we're gonna get to work and we're gonna produce some of the best food that you can get within four to five hours from here. And so that's a big obligation and that's a big opportunity at the same time. And so that's kind of really what the culinary culture is all about is, creating people that want to do that for a living. And when you wake up every day loving what you do, it's not a day of work. And I yeah, can be a yeah. full on it's, testament to that. Yeah, I, I, I love that. How, how is that gonna work with the, you, you mentioned a couple of times, you're gonna, you're gonna build a dedicated educational kitchen. So this area where um, your folks that are in the work and learn program can literally step aside from, from, from the rail or the pass for a minute, Mm -hmm. and 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 exercise their you know their assignments and that sort of thing that that is a huge huge commitment and it, and 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 i absolutely love it um well, how's that working yeah it's it's great so i i want to uh like 
we're lucky that we have 12,000 square feet to kind of expand here sure, uh, at yeah. the Angry Cactus. And so 3,500 of it is going to be dedicated to the new facility. Wow. Um, and what it's going to be, the, the way we work here at the Angry Cactus is um, on Mondays and Wednesdays, our prep team is, that's their two days off. And so we, on Mondays, we use that for labs uh, through a Escoffier. And so it's almost a dual purpose um, where uh, we can have a full restaurant going on uh, and everything going on. But in the back, we can have up to 12 students working on their culinary program, working on the Escoffier online piece. And so being able to kind of do that and being able to kind of and I, and I refer to this place as my culinary compound. It's amazing um, being <laughs> able to kind of like have all of these different um, elements going on under one roof and being able to show, uh, you know, even some agriculture pieces like I'm out here on my patio and we've got, um, you know, jalapenos and we've got all different beautiful things out here. Um, it's just gorgeous. Wow. It, yeah. It's just an amazing yeah. facility to be able to um, really just showcase every piece and every portion. And of course, 30 minutes away at my home, I, we've got a fully functioning farm with chickens and all kinds of stuff out there. So really having these things where we can grow our own vegetables and, and show how to pickle and can and ferment, or we butcher a pig uh, and we get to learn how to use every single element of that pig. All of that can be taught in a book, but you can't ever do it in real life unless you work at a place like Angry Cactus, where there's really no rules. And so that's a huge opportunity. And it's kind of our fame uh, and our claim to fame here is, is to be able to have no rules when it comes to culinary opportunities. You know, if we want to shut down and throw a murder mystery dinner and do entertainment and acting and things and do a nice three or four course meal, we can do that. If we want to do a tequila <laughs> tasting with five different courses, or we want to do paella on the patio out here, cooked over open coals, we can do that. And so we do it very often and we do it all the time. And it's just a, a really cool thing to be able to practice our craft every single day and do things that we've never done before and learn and all of that. And it really creates this amazing culinary culture that I keep talking about. And that's really the secret sauce, the secret to our success here at the Angry Cactus. Just brilliant. You know, practice your craft and respect the craft. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. I can't believe I'm even going to ask this with, with as much you have going that you have going on. Uh, what's the next mountain to climb? What, what, what are you interested in beyond what you're building there? Yeah, well, um, the you know, I, I've uh, been 100% owner of my company since I've uh, founded it. And so I've got my first culinary intern from 12 years ago here at the local high school. He's been working for me for 12 years now. Him and uh, another person on my staff, we're going to be giving them ownership in our company. And they're going to be growing Lone Star Cheeseburger Company, the world's largest drive through restaurant. Uh, they're going to be doing that. And um, me personally, I'm really getting into the sustainability aspect of farming and things of that nature. And so uh, we're working on kind of doing a farm and kind of homesteading and, and being having a self-sustainable farm that can produce uh, beautiful chickens and donkeys. Or, I mean, not donkeys donkeys we don't we don't cook donkeys but we you know goats and pigs and things of that nature uh, uh, but uh no more, know, drinks, um, no more drinks yeah, no more drinks staff no more drinks but uh you know that's kind of something and, and really being able to bring people into my home and cook for say 12 10 to 12 people in my home with products that i've personally grown or pickled or raised or you know fed from birth and you know harvested and all those different things and so I think there's just, you know, the one thing that I can always tell anyone that's going into the culinary field is there will always be a need for somebody to eat and somebody to cook that food. <laughs> that's no. never going to go away. And so being flexible well and being able to sell food in a fast food setting, in a fine dining setting, in a catering setting, or just um, being able to provide a, a homestead that is sustainable and be able to bring people into your home and have a five course meal made of just things that are grown on the farm. You know, there's always going to be a need for somebody to cook. And so I think that's why our industry is such a safe bet is there's always going to be a need for chefs. There's always going to need be a need for cooks because there's always going to be people that need to eat. <laughs> so yeah, us, us that's not going away. <laughs> I, I, I just can't even believe what a, what a fun conversation this has been this morning. Your passion is 
infectious. Um, you know, one of the things I it keeps going through my mind as we're talking here, you probably know this already, that for, for, for our online students, um, you know, who are in every state of the nation, um, several times a year, we come together and farm the table events in, in different locations from, you know, Vermont to Ohio to, to Austin, Texas, to Boulder, Colorado. And um, so I'm calling you to see if we can get some people to come hang out with you and, and check out the donkeys on your farm <laughs> <laughs> and the chickens and the chickens. So that's a, whole, that's a whole nother conversation. But um, chef, before I let you go, the name of the podcast is the ultimate dish. So I, I, I think you've already gone over a lot of it, but in your mind, it, what is that one ultimate dish that always stays with you? Absolutely. Well, I, I go back to the number one uh, item off the very top of our menu here at the Angry Cactus, and it's called the Not Your Grandma's Meatloaf, because <laughs> it's this amazing blend of chorizo and ground beef, uh, a little bit of corn, some cheddar cheese and poblanos, wrapped in a corn husk, smoked with local mesquite in our pit right out back. And then we just finish it in the oven and grill it to order. It's a beautiful dish finished with a nice little Bar barbecue sauce that has a little fusion elements in it, sweet chili and things of that nature, kind of from my Hawaiian days. And then, uh, oh, you know, brilliant. it's just a beautiful fusion of um, home style food and everything. Uh, look at with the train in the background. I, I, I it could not be more perfect. The bustling right? metropolis of downtown <laughs> San Angelo, San Texas. Angelo, I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Hey, thanks so much uh, for the time. Uh, our best to your students uh, behind that door, and we're we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get you on again because there's there's a lot more to talk about. Well, thanks thank for you. thanks My for pleasure. joining us today. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Thank you for listening to the Ultimate Dish Podcast, brought to you by Auguste Escoffier School of Culinary Arts. Visit escoffier.edu forward slash podcast, where you'll find any materials mentioned during the podcast, including notes, links, and other resources. You can also browse other episodes and subscribe.